Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Bernoulli's principle. So Bernoulli is one of my favorite physicists, mostly because of his first name. I'll give you three guesses as to what that is. But we're going to be talking about his most famous contribution to physics, which is, of course, Bernoulli's principle in fluids. So first, let me give you the formula. It's probably the longest equation in physics one. It is pressure one plus rho g h one, where rho is density, but I'll be explaining all these variables in a second, plus one half rho v one squared. That is equal to the exact same thing, except replace all the ones with twos. So pressure two plus rho g h two plus one half rho v two squared. And the reason why we use Bernoulli's principle is because there is a pressure difference between two points, either because of gravitational potential energy, which is the rho g h, or because of kinetic energy, the one half rho v squared. Now, technically, it's not potential energy or kinetic energy. This is more like potential pressure and kinetic pressure. But don't think about that too hard. Clearly, it's very similar to the conservation of energy equation because it's very similar to mgh and one half mv squared. The only difference is we're trading out mass for Greek letter rho, which rho is equal to density of the fluid we're in. Usually they give you that in the problem. Now I believe everything else in this equation is pretty straightforward. Two things I want to mention though. Number one, this height, well, both of these heights are measured from the bottom. They are measured from the bottom. And that's significant because if you think of the other pressure equation, pressure equals rho g h, which I cover in a different video, this height is measured from the top. And I don't really have a good reason as to why that is, but just memorize it and you'll be fine. Well, actually, no, I do have an answer. It's because it's a simplified version of Bernoulli's principle. In other words, let's say I have a cup of water filled to the top and the cup has height h and you want to find the pressure at the bottom of the cup. Essentially, what we're saying is you have to choose two points. The first point I would choose is at the top of the cup or it's connected to air because that's going to be one atm which is famously 101,300 pascals which is the units i want or 101.3 kilopascals kpa but i don't like those units personally i like pascals more and then this pressure p2 at the bottom this is what we're solving for now in reality i would never use bernoulli's principle for this one i would just say the pressure at p2 is equal to rho for the water, which is usually 1000, times g 9.8, times the height of this cup. And then technically I'm supposed to add the pressure from the top because pressure is cumulative. In other words, the pressure here plus the pressure covered by my black line gives me the total pressure at P2. But anyways, in terms of how I'd use Bernoulli's principle to solve this, pressure one, 101,300, plus rho g h1, which is 1000 for water, g is 9.8, and the height here is the full height h, whatever that ends up being, because we're measuring it from the bottom now, and the one half rho v squared is gonna be zero because nothing's flowing, nothing's moving in this container. On the right side, I have pressure two, plus its gravitational potential pressure, which would be rho 1000, g 9.8 times its height at the bottom, which of course would be zero. And so basically this ends up being the answer. And if I give you a height, you can actually calculate for pressure two. And so maybe that didn't answer your question for why it's measured from the top one way and measured from the bottom for Bernoulli's principle. But if you stare at this for long enough, maybe it will start to sink in. Regardless, it's not important if you understand why. It's important if you understand the what which is again, just this equation. Now, one more thing I wanna say about this equation, a lot of times the velocity, yes, the velocity will be changing even though they don't tell us directly that it's changing. What I mean by that is whenever I have a tube changing size like this, like this is a big tube and it's flowing to a little tube, famously, 
the velocity here is going to be smaller than the velocity coming out at the smaller end. And the way we prove that is with the continuity flow equation, which I cover in a different video. But just to give you a quick synopsis, A1 V1 equals A2 V2, where usually the area is either pi r squared for a circle, or it's length times width for a rectangle. And it's two-dimensional because it's the cross section, not the volume. So that's the introduction to Bernoulli's principle. Now let's prove that we know how to do it using some examples. So for this first one here, I have a big section of tube leading to a smaller section of tube. Maybe this is like a funnel. It is gonna be vertical with a total height of 80 centimeters. Water is gonna be flowing through the big section of tube at a rate of one meter per second for its velocity. And it's coming out at the other end with let's say four meters per second. So in other words, I don't need that A1 V1 equals A2 V2 equation because I'm giving you the velocities because I felt like being nice for this first one. And so my question for the first one, I want you to find delta P, the change in pressure from this point, point one, to this point down here, point two. So in other words, I want you to find P2 minus P1 using Bernoulli's principle. And I'll be helping us for this first one. So first I'll rewrite the equation. Pressure one plus rho GH one plus one half rho V one squared is equal to pressure two plus rho GH two plus one half rho V two squared. Now one thing you should pick up on, I'm never gonna actually know what P one and P two are because I'm looking for the difference. So then the way I'm going to start this problem is I'm going to plug in as many numbers as I know. I should have told you this. The density of water is again 1000 units are kilogram per meter cubed. So plugging in this formula as much as I know, it's going to be P1 plus 1000 times 9.8 times the height measured from the bottom is going to be the full 80 centimeters because look at point one. It's higher. It's the full 80 centimeters or I should say 0.8 meters, 0.8 goes right there. And then plus one half rho V squared, that's gonna be one half times a thousand times V1, which I give as one meter per second. So times one squared equals pressure two, which is again unknown, plus 1000 times 9.8 times height two is gonna be zero because again, we're measuring from the bottom and height two is at zero. So that all is just gonna to go to zero. And then plus one half rho V2 squared, that velocity is four meters per second coming out the bottom. So times four squared. Okay, so I'm gonna plug a lot of this in my calculator to see what this gives me. So I'll get pressure one plus, this turns out to be 7,840 and then plus this is gonna be 500 equals pressure two plus this guy zero because anything times zero is zero. And then this is going to be plus 8,000. And so maybe I wanna combine the left side to give me P1 plus 8340 equals P2 plus 8,000. Now before you do anything else, remember what I wanna solve for. I wanna solve for P2 minus P1. So in other words, I would subtract P1 from both sides, and I would also subtract 8,000 from both sides, giving me on the left, just 340, on the right, P2 minus P1, which is my delta P value. So the answer is gonna be 340, and again, the units are just Pascals. So there we go, that's how we use Bernoulli's principle. And so hopefully that made sense, if it didn't, well, then you're gonna really hate this next one. So for number two, I have a section of tube that's getting wider while also simultaneously flowing down like this. On the left side flowing in is a velocity of 1.3 meters per second. And I don't know the speed at the other end. I'm gonna call this V2. You're gonna have to solve for it, but that's not my actual question. My question is, if I give you the pressure at this point right there, pressure one equals 0.8 
ATM. I want you to find pressure 2 at the fat end of the tube. And as a piece of advice, I want the answer in Pascals. I know I gave us this in ATM, but the first thing we're going to do is convert ATM to Pascals. And before you get started with this problem, another thing I need to give you is the diameter of these tubes. So the diameter of this circular section, the small end, is going to be 5 centimeters. And the diameter of the big end of the tube, that diameter is 15 centimeters. And also I need to tell you that the distance between the median height of these tubes, this distance is going to be 16 centimeters. So now I want you to try solving this one on your own. Pause the video, see how far you can get, and when you get stuck or you want to see the answer, just unpause the video. Okay, so the first thing I need, of course, is the equation. P1 plus rho GH1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared equals pressure 2 plus rho gh2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared. I'm going to take a break from this formula because in order to solve it, I'm going to need v2. The way you get velocity 2 is that equation I said earlier. Area 1 velocity 1 equals area 2 velocity 2. So area 1, it is a circle. Both of these areas are circles, which is going to follow the equation area equals pi r squared. Now you'll notice I gave you diameters because I'm a jerk and that's what they usually do on the test. So if you want to find the radii, you need to divide these diameters by 2. So in other words, the first radius is just 2.5 centimeters. The radius of the other one is 7.5 centimeters. And yes, we do have to convert those to meters as well. Terrible, I know. So area 1 is pi times 2.5 squared, but remember, that's centimeters. 2.5 centimeters is 0 0.025 meters, and that is what I need for r. And then times velocity 1, which I know is 1.3, equals area 2, which is pi times radius would be 0 0.075 squared, times that velocity, which is the one I'm solving for, v2. So I notice the pi's will cancel, and then to solve for V2, I just have to divide both sides by 0 0.075 squared. And that's going to give me a velocity of 0.144 meters per second, which, yes, that is much slower than our first velocity, 1.3. Which makes sense, because the bigger end of the tube is always going to be slower than the small end of the tube. And so then now, I can start plugging into Bernoulli's equation, P1, which was 0.8, which that was ATMs, and I still have to convert that. So 0.8 ATM, I just have to do some dimensional analysis. There's one ATM in 101,300 pascals, and that's going to give me 81,040 pascals. So that's P1. 81,040 plus rho GH. I forgot to mention, this is still water. So still 1,000 times g is 9.8 times the height at 0.1. This is going to be the highest point, the 16 centimeters. And I do need to convert that to meters. So instead of 16, I'm dividing by 100 to get me 0.16 meters. And then plus 1 half rho 1,000 v1 squared. Velocity 1 was 1.3, and that's squared. And then I have to set this equal, which I'm going to write on the next line, to P2, I'm solving for P2, I don't know it yet, plus rho GH1. Height 1 is 0. Again, we're at the lowest point. And by the way, I gave you the distance from the middle. Always measure from the middle of the tube section. So in other words, rho GH2 is going to be 0 plus 1 half rho 1000 V2 squared v2 was 0.144, and that's squared. So then reducing as much of this as I can, the entire left side, I can just plug in a calculator, and that'll get me 83,453. And on the right side, it's going to be p2 plus 10.43, which is pretty small compared to the ginormous pressure I have on the left side. So then final answer, just subtract 10.43 
from both sides. And I'll just round my answer to the nearest whole number, giving me 83,443 pascals. And there's my answer. So hopefully that made sense. If not, please write your questions in the comments section. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.